From a great racing heritage comes an exciting new sports car. The Renault Fuego. Fast, sleek, and built for the road. To make this great car even more exciting, Renault is offering an exciting new option. The turbocharged engine. Designed to deliver the performance of a big engine when it's needed and the fuel economy of a small engine under light load conditions. In this training film, we'll acquaint you with what's unique about the Renault Fuego turbo system. We'll begin with a look at the design features of the Fuego turbo system. Then we'll turn our attention to the necessary control and safety systems. And finally, we'll cover the diagnosis and service procedures you'll need to be familiar with in order to properly service the Fuego Turbo. First, let's describe the special design features of the Fuego Turbo system. The Fuego Turbo uses a new engine, the A7L23. This engine is similar in design to the familiar 843 engine currently used on the Renault 18i and the non-turbocharged Fuego. The engine components for the A7L23 are specially built to withstand the high temperatures and pressures associated with turbocharging. A new electronic ignition system is used to more precisely maintain ignition advance values. Excessive advance could cause detonation and engine damage. Insufficient advance could cause performance loss or could raise the exhaust temperature enough to cause damage to the turbine as well as internal engine components. Also, because the engine runs very close to the detonation phase when on full power, a knock detector is required to prevent engine damage. We'll discuss the detector in more detail later in this film. In addition, the Fuego Turbo requires the use of premium grade unleaded fuel. This too helps reduce the possibility of detonation. The fuel injection system is essentially the Bosch L Jetronic system currently used on the Renault 18i and the non turbocharged Fuego. This system is designed to continuously monitor the engine's air and fuel needs and automatically adjust the fuel supply to each cylinder as needed. If you're not familiar with the Bosch system, you may want to review training release 80-3, Electronic Fuel Injection, Theory of Operation. There's one important modification to the Bosch system of which you should be aware. The twin relay is replaced with two separate relays, a tack relay located under the passenger seat near the ECU, and a power relay located in the engine compartment next to the diagnostic socket. The tack relay passes power to the fuel pump when the engine RPM is above 50. The power relay controls the other components and is activated by the ignition key. The Fuego Turbo is equipped with a large capacity oil pump capable of providing the additional output needed by the turbocharger. The heart of the turbo system is the Garrett T3 turbocharger. If you are not familiar with the basic theory of operation of turbocharging, please view training release 82-2. This release covers the basic construction and operation of turbochargers. For those who aren't yet familiar with the concept of turbocharging, the film will serve as a valuable source of information. The T3 turbocharger requires the use of an integral wastegate control. The wastegate control consists of a valve connected to a diaphragm with a spring calibrated to 0.88 bar, or 12.7 PSI. At this pressure, the wastegate will allow a portion of the exhaust gases to bypass the turbine, preventing any further increase in turbocharger speed and boost pressure. To check the wastegate control, you'll need to use the special tools shown here the Mott 867 pressure gauge, and the MS554-03 hand pump. These tools will also be required to make several other pressure checks. To check the movement of the wastegate lever arm, use the special tools we've just seen together with a dial indicator. 
The arm should move 15 thousandths of an inch when a pressure of 0.85 to 0.91 bar or 12.3 to 13.2 PSI is applied to the diaphragm capsule. Keep in mind that the wastegate valve is factory set. Never modify the wastegate setting as excessive boost will cause engine and turbocharger damage. If out of specification, the entire turbocharger unit must be replaced. In addition to the wastegate, the Fuego Turbo also has an air-to-air -air heat exchanger, or intercooler, to control the intake manifold air temperature. The intercooler requires the use of an electric cooling fan system. A fan pressure switch mounted on the firewall controls the fan circuit. This switch is one of three switches we'll be discussing. In terms of location, it is the center switch. When pressure developed by the turbocharger exceeds 0.3 bar, or 4.7 PSI, the pressure switch closes, activating the relay, which then energizes the cooling fan circuit. The fan will continue to operate until the pressure drops below 0.3 bar. Two delay valves and a small reservoir provide a slight delay so that the fan doesn't start and stop erratically. By reducing the temperature of the compressed air, the intercooler not only reduces the chance for detonation, it also improves the filling of the cylinders because the cooled air is denser. To check the operation of the cooling fan system, apply pressure to the fan switch. At 0.3 bar or 4.7 PSI, the fan should come on. Another special feature of the Fuego Turbo is a boost gauge located on the instrument panel. This gauge allows the driver to monitor the vacuum or boost pressure in the intake manifold. Vacuum is shown in the white zone, boost in the orange, and overboost in the red zone. The numbers shown are tenths of a bar. That completes our look at the special design features of the Renault Fuego Turbo System. The key points to remember are that the Fuego Turbo uses a new engine, the A7L23, and has Bosch L-Jetronic fuel injection. The turbocharger system consists of a Garrett T3 with an integral wastegate control to safely limit the amount of boost delivered by the turbocharger, and an intercooler to control intake manifold air temperatures. A boost gauge allows the driver to monitor vacuum or boost pressure. Next, let's turn our attention to the four control and safety systems found on the Fuego Turbo. The first system we'll discuss is the overboost protection system. This system is designed to limit boost pressure by electrically interrupting the fuel injection system. The overboost protection system consists of a pressure operated switch which senses the output pressure of the turbocharger. If the pressure exceeds 1.3 bars, or 18.8 PSI, the switch will close, signaling the fuel injection ECU to intermittently interrupt the fuel supply to the engine until the boost pressure is reduced to a safe level. The fuel injection system will then return to its normal operation. The overboost pressure switch is also located on the firewall. A three-tenths of a millimeter restrictor in the switch line keeps the switch from operating erratically. To check the overboost system, start the engine, and after a 30-second wait, accelerate it to 3,000 RPM. Then apply pressure to the switch. At 1.3 bars, or 18.8 PSI, the switch should interrupt the fuel supply, and the engine RPM should drop to about 2,500. The second system we'll look at is the overspeed protection system. This system limits excessive engine RPM by intermittently interrupting the fuel injection system. The ignition control unit, or ICU, directly monitors engine RPM and sends a tachometer signal to the ECU. If the engine speed exceeds 6,000 RPM, the ECU will intermittently interrupt the fuel supply to the engine. This will prevent the engine from exceeding a safe speed. 
there are no recommended tests of this system. You should, however, be aware of the overspeed system's operation. Next, let's look at the full load enrichment system. The purpose of this system is to provide a richer fuel mixture under boost. The richer mixture will then reduce the exhaust gas temperature, protecting both the engine and the turbine. When the pressure in the intake manifold exceeds 0.3 bar, or 4.7 PSI, the switch closes, signaling the ECU to enrich the fuel mixture. The delay valve keeps the system from operating erratically. Like the fan switch and the overboost switch, you'll find the full load pressure switch located on the firewall. To check the full load enrichment system, First, connect an ohmmeter across pins 9 and 10 of the fuel injection diagnostic socket. You should get an infinite resistance reading. Next, apply a pressure of 0.3 bar or 4.7 psi to the full load switch. The ohmmeter should now read 0 ohms, indicating that the switch has closed. Because the turbo engine runs very close to the detonation point when on full power, a knock detector system is required to prevent engine damage. This system temporarily retards the ignition timing whenever detonation is detected. The knock detector system has one main component, the knock detector, which is mounted on the cylinder head. When the detector senses abnormal engine noise, such as detonation, it signals the ignition control unit. This, in turn, retards the timing 6 to 9 degrees for 10 to 15 seconds. The timing will progressively return to its value prior to when detonation was detected. If detonation reappears while timing is climbing back to its original value, the timing is again retarded. To determine whether the knock detector is working correctly, start the engine and tap the cylinder head with a brass punch. A small drop in engine RPM should occur as the timing is retarded. Remember, never tap the sensor itself as this will damage it. To review, there are four control and safety systems. The overboost protection system limits boost pressure by interrupting the fuel injection system. The overspeed protection system limits engine RPM also by interrupting the fuel injection system. The full load enrichment system provides a richer fuel mixture under boost. And the knock detector system retards the ignition timing whenever detonation is detected. Now that you're familiar with the turbo system used on the Fuego, let's take a look at the approved diagnosis and service procedures for the turbocharger system. Properly maintained, the turbocharger should give years of trouble-free service. However, if failure does occur, the causes can be grouped into three major areas. One, lack of lubricant. Two, contaminated lubricant. And three, ingestion of foreign objects. The first two causes, lack of lubricant and contaminated lubricant, both result in worn internal components. Because the turbocharger shaft rotates at speeds of up to 120,000 revolutions per minute, Insufficient oil for as short as a few seconds under heavy load conditions will cause bearing failure. Likewise, the abrasive action of contaminants will wear and fail components. To ensure a proper oil supply to the turbocharger, there are two special precautions of which both the technician and the owner should be aware. First, allow the engine to idle for at least 30 seconds after startup to establish the necessary lubrication to the turbocharger bearings. And second, allow the engine to idle for about 30 seconds before switching off the ignition. This will allow the turbine to slow down before the oil supply is cut off. Also, always pre-oil a new turbocharger assembly center housing before installing the turbocharger in the vehicle. This will ensure that the bearings receive adequate lubrication. Then, bleed the oil supply line by disconnecting the line and cranking the engine. Be sure to disable the ignition system before cranking. Because cleanliness is so important to the operation of the turbocharger, 
It's also critical that the oil filter and the engine oil be changed at the recommended intervals. The owner should be made aware of these intervals and encouraged to return to your dealership for the proper maintenance. The third cause of turbocharger failure, ingestion of foreign objects, is readily apparent by looking at the turbine and compressor wheels. Foreign objects will bend, tear, or erode the vanes, as shown here. Therefore, it's important that you change the air filter at the recommended intervals. Also, make sure that all air intake circuit connections are tight. And remember, always make sure the air filter is in place and the air intake circuit is tightened down before operating the turbocharger. Now that you know the three major causes of turbocharger failure, let's cover the common symptoms that signal a possible problem. Low engine power or black smoke are signs that an insufficient amount of air is reaching the engine. This could be caused by a clogged or leaky air intake or exhaust system. Both blue smoke and excessive engine oil consumption are signs that oil may be leaking from the turbocharger through an oil seal. And finally, a noisy turbocharger may be the result of loose connections, failed bearings, or foreign materials. Keep in mind that many components other than the turbocharger can cause the same symptoms as a faulty turbocharger. It's often easier to check the turbocharger first then go on and look elsewhere if the turbo is okay. Just how do we check for a turbocharger failure? Here are three ways. First, listen to the sound the turbo makes. After you've worked with the Fuego turbo for a while, you'll become familiar with the normal sound the turbocharger makes. An abnormally high-pitched whine may indicate a leak from the exhaust connections or a leak in the air intake circuit. A cycling up and down in pitch often indicates an obstruction in the air inlet duct, a restricted air filter, or an accumulation of dirt on the compressor wheel. A real screamer may be trying to tell you that the bearings have failed and that one or both of the wheels are rubbing on their housings. Next, look. Remove the exhaust and air intake pipes and use a flashlight to check for rub marks on the wheels and the housings. Is there any evidence of vein damage from foreign objects? Is there dirt on the compressor wheel? Coke and carbon on the turbine wheel? Are any veins missing? A small amount of oil leakage into the turbine and compressor housings is normal. This is because the turbocharger uses a dynamic seal instead of a mechanical seal. If you see a heavy accumulation of burned oil deposits on the turbine wheel, check the exhaust manifold. Oil in the exhaust manifold indicates an engine fault, not a turbocharger problem. Oil in the turbine housing may also indicate a clogged oil return line. Without adequate drainage, the oil pressure in the center housing can become high enough to force oil out the turbine end. Finally, feel the turbocharger. It may help you locate defects that aren't readily apparent. First, if the turbocharger is hot, allow it to cool. Then rotate each of the wheels by hand. They should turn smoothly and freely with no sign of binding or scraping. Push inward on each wheel as you turn it and check for the same symptoms. If you find a problem, you'll have to replace the turbocharger. No repair procedures are authorized. The entire unit must be replaced. Be sure to use the new nuts, studs, and gaskets included in the replacement kit. The turbocharger is mounted to the exhaust manifold by a six-stud flange. Because the center nut is difficult to reach, the turbocharger and exhaust manifold must be removed as an assembly. Never handle or grab the turbocharger assembly at the wastegate control linkage. The nuts and studs on the turbine side of the turbocharger are made of a special heat-resistant alloy. They must be torqued to 30 foot-pounds. Once again, remember, 
always pre-oil a new turbocharger assembly before installing it in the vehicle to ensure that the bearings receive adequate lubrication. Then, bleed the oil supply line until all air is removed. Finally, be sure to thoroughly check all intake and exhaust ducts for foreign objects before you reconnect them. A few minutes spent now can save you hours of downtime later. That completes our look at turbocharger diagnosis and service. To review, there are three major causes of turbocharger failure. One, lack of lubricant. Two, contaminated lubricant. And three, ingestion of foreign objects. There are several common symptoms which indicate a possible problem. Low engine power or black smoke, blue smoke and or excessive engine oil consumption, and noisy turbocharger operation. To locate a possible turbocharger problem, follow the three troubleshooting steps we discussed. Listen, look, feel. If turbocharger replacement is necessary, always replace the entire unit. Don't forget to pre-oil the assembly and bleed the supply line. For a complete review of the information you've learned today, be sure to refer to the reference book included in this kit. Keep it handy whenever you have a question on the Renault Fuego Turbo System.